All right, Randy. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Friday edition of Richardson Plano Networking. And today we have, we always have great speakers, but today I think we have a particularly great speaker. Um, you know, you read through her bio and it just all makes sense. Uh, and so I'm going to read a lot of it. Uh, she's had over 200 speaking engagements every year. And like we were telling before, that's a lot of flying and she's still doing it, but she's doing it by a Zoom. So that's helping her a little bit. Uh, she's a best-selling author, consultant. She consistently wows audiences worldwide with her entertaining and interactive keynotes, seminars, and training programs on publicity, networking, and influence marketing. She shared her powerful networking and publicity strategies on stages of Tony Robbins, T. Harv Ecker, Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, Laurel Langemeyer, and lots of other people. Additionally, thousands of people have attended her popular crash course, course in publicity, and she teaches live several times a month at locations around the US and Canada. She's the author of four best-selling books, including Get Noticed, Get Referrals. Uh, second one is Network Magic. Uh, the third is Guerrilla Publicity, uh, which is called the PR Bible. And her latest book, uh, is it soon to be a bestseller, as David would say, Profit of Kindness, uh, all which went, which went number one in all four categories that it's registered in. In addition to her speaking engagement, she trains and consults with executives, sales teams, and marketing departments in Fortune 500 companies, as well as in small to medium-sized companies. Her innovative influence marketing and publicity techniques consistently increase her bottom line for her clients. Uh, today, I think she's going to talk about how to stay visible in troubled times. And I guess we're in troubled times. So please put your hands together and welcome our special guest, Jill Lublai. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so delighted to be here with all of you and grateful for the opportunity to serve you from the Bay Area to Texas. <laughs> How wonderful is that, right? I mean, this is, here's what I want to say. What I'm seeing in today's times as a publicity expert and working literally with hundreds of people in, in all kinds of ways right now to reposition and repivot messages is that this is a powerful time to get your name out there, to increase your visibility, to create more visibility. And that's why I love publicity in a way. That's why I love this time because it is a great time for you to create that visibility marketing tactics and then implementation that your name gets out there consistently. And I just wanna set a context for you if I may that publicity happens from the minute you walk out your door. In this case, from the minute you're Zooming. Love the cat, Don, by the way, I have one too in my lap, just FYI. <laughs> and um, to tell you all that, you know, this is a magnificent time to, in a way, see who you are by your places. You know, I have my books in my background. You haven't seen the rest of the messy office, but other than that, you know, the reality is that we have an opportunity now to connect more with each other. You can Zoom, you can be part of groups that maybe perhaps you haven't had time to be in yet. So I just think there's some really unique opportunities. And to please know that publicity, in my opinion, is showing up on this wonderful meeting this morning. Congratulations, all of you. It is about what your Zoom um, names look like. And I just want to say for some of you, like Richard, I heard you introduce yourself as Dick. So you probably want to change your Zoom name, right? Barter Bob, I love how you have that as a Zoom name. I think that's really super. But you all want to make sure that your Zoom names are reflecting who you are with full and last names, particularly men have a, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll, I was on this other Zoom with one of my clients on my uh, publicity course, which we're now doing virtually. It's fabulous. And, um, you know, he said his name was Steve, but his Zoom name was Mike. I'm like, wait, I don't get it. He said, well, that's because my nickname is Mike. Well, then so be Mike, right, on the Zoom. So just pay attention to how you're showing up, whether it's on Zoom, uh, what's in your backgrounds. I love Mako on your different backgrounds, all, the, all what you're showing and the graphics and the fun of that, right? So have some fun. Be 
creative with what you're putting out there. And I think that's a really unique today, right now, is a really unique opportunity. Notice David has the Richardson Plano Networkers banner right in his back. And also your, is that your book, David? Also in your back, uh, background there? You're on mute. Yeah, sorry, I don't want to take over the screen. Yes, uh, it's actually the Vision Challenge workbook that uh, I work with my clients on. There you go, see? Beautiful. Ricky, all your wonderful instruments are in your background showing who you are. I love that. And by the way, Ricky, I started my publicity career in the music business for actually five years. I was the director of promotion of publicity at several independent record labels and uh, also did some artist management. So just so you know, I actually, and I think this is a, an interesting part of my own story that um, before I wrote Guerrilla Publicity, I actually learned publicity in the music business. Because if you look at the music business, let's just take that for a moment. You know, what's fascinating to me is that you see artists and musicians create Really, it's all about perception, right? Let's just uh, take Gene Simmons for a minute. Gene Simmons, by the way, a brilliant businessman, right? And what's he doing? If you think about all his background and who he was, it's all marketing, isn't it? It's all publicity. It's all perception. So I want you to be thinking about publicity as a way to build your perception and what I love about publicity, let me just tell you, and by the way, take some notes today because I'm going to give you some great content and some value and benefit just for being here because, well, I think I always believe in giving good value and good benefit, just like you all do to your clients. And so what I love about the power of publicity is that it returns high return on investment. I can give you story after story, client after client by doing some publicity pieces, and I'll tell you some real stories today, the income that came from that. So what I love about it, it gives you increased prospects, it gives you more sales, it gives you trust in the marketplace, it gives you more visibility and more credibility and more money and more exposure in the marketplace. And I only mean the good kind. I only mean the good kind because that's what we want because really it is all about your message. And interestingly enough, in the word message, you know what are two words, me and sage. In the word message. In the word message is also mess. And what I'd like you to do is create a powerful message. And I wanna play with some of you in just a moment with your message. And what I love, and that really works, you know, when I wrote Guerrilla Publicity, I was privileged to talk to media all across the country. Uh, one of whom I talked to was Entrepreneur Magazine. And imagine, you know, what it would do for your business to be in Entrepreneur Magazine. I talked to Fast Company Magazine and the editor there, she said, you know, Jill, what I really want is I want value and benefit. And so when you give your problem, what I want you to think about is what's the problem today? And I mean the problem today out in the marketplace, not what you do. And this is something I think entrepreneurs and business people make a mistake about, is that they, they're too much um, focusing on what I do, what I do, versus here's what's in it for you. And so I want you to start using you language. I think you language will make a huge difference. And when you say the problem today is, think about what's the problem out there? So, you know, I heard some of you like, um, uh, Dick, you're talking about building business and strong selling. Well, don't you think people are going to need strong selling tactics right now, even more so than in other times? Todd, on life insurance, I mean, what do we do? How much do we have? Should we have, right? These are all questions that I think are really important. And you also mentioned something about, you know, if you're out of work, you still got to have insurance. Well, gosh knows, when I last looked at the unemployment rates um, of the highest it's ever been right now, you have a whole media story that you could be talking about right now. And so this is what I want you all to think about. Kathy, you were talking about marketing, you know, marketing. How do we market? Just like I'm telling you how to get publicity in troubled times. How do we market in troubled times? Everything that most of you are doing, I want you to turn it around and direct it toward how can you, and then fill in the blank for right now, right? 
let me just look at some other list and see who who else mary bookkeeping like wow what do we do in today's times to keep track of books right how do we do that nicole um, i'm working actually with an educational psychologist right now and i see that you have a story about employees hey guess what uh, as employees are coming back to work as people are stressed still staying at home how do they avoid conflict how do they play in your words nice in the sandbox i know you have good thoughts for all of them randy as a business growth strategist how do we grow through pandemic times what do we do to grow our business even more now um, you know and i think for many of you uh, dave uh, the vision right how do you have a new vision for what's happening now so, you know, that's just some of you that I thought of right away, but I want you to see that your message, your message is what's key. And I want you to create what I like to call your ooh, ah, factor. Your ooh, ah, factor. So what does that mean? It means that we're looking at what is it that makes other people go ooh and ah about you. Now, this could be something about your business, or it might be something that's personal. It might be something that's vulnerable. It might be, I like to call it, using everything you've got. Use everything you've got. So if particularly when you're looking at getting more media, which is what I want all of you to do, because I promise you, getting more media will drive prospects to you easily, attract people to you effortlessly, and, and be like really an attraction marketing versus a push marketing effort and i think that's really powerful in today's world people want authentic marketing they want to understand why you're going to make a difference for them and so using everything you've got could be the very thing that gets you media that you want so for instance my christian clients go to christian media my hispanic clients use hispanic media and so on and so forth use everything you've got and that will increase your media a lot. So, um, so for instance, in my publicity course, a gentleman was there. He's from Pakistan, and you know, and it's these are virtual courses now. And I see him do this, you know, headbang in his Zoom uh, Zoom square. I call them Hollywood squares, and uh, it was so cute because he was like, "Oh my gosh, I never thought." to use the fact that I'm Pakistani. And so he started Googling and found five Pakistani newsletters. And he's in LA, in the LA area. He got in four of them using this tactic of using everything he's got. And you know what's interesting? He increased his tribe, the people he reached, and by literally 40,000 people. Here's what else you gotta get. Um, those 40,000 people become part of his email list, part of his tribe. He's a business consultant. You want to be able to reach as many people as possible to let them know what you have. Uh, one of my clients, Ryan, he's an instructional designer. To be honest, I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> he said, Jill, I really want to work with you. And I'm like, great, Ryan, what do you do? He told me that he was an instructional designer. And I'm like, well, what's that? He said that, uh, he told me what it was, and well, <laughs> to be honest, I told him that wasn't that interesting, but tell me his story. And he told me his story. He told me that his wife had been downsized, uh, excuse me, that he had actually been downsized from a corporate job. He told me that his wife was pregnant with their third child on the way. And he told me that he had just bought a big house with a big mortgage payment. And did I mention no job? I'm like, Ryan, what'd you do? He said, well, I started my own company and online, literally, he had seven people doing instructional design virtually. I thought, well, now that's an interesting story. So one of the things I've done throughout my career is I take my client's story and I reposition, just like many of you are doing right now in a repivot of your businesses. And, and I said, Ryan, you know what you are? You're a virtual office warrior. And you know, the acronym for that is VOW, Virtual Office Warrior. Well, do you know that the San Francisco Business Times featured a story about Ryan Yee, literally front page. And you know what the headline said? When fired, you too can VOW 
not to work in an office again. That's the acronym for Virtual Office Warrior. They used our headline. They used our positioning. You see, the, the media really wants to feature you, the Dallas Morning News, you know, the people who are in your market. And by the way, for some of you, I have a former Fox reporter right in Dallas. And if you're a good match, please do me a favor, message me privately. You have a great business story. I can probably get you on his show. So that's pretty super. Um, you know, with Ryan, what, what uh, we did with the power of his publicity is literally increased his revenues by 40%. And remember I, taught you, I, I just told you about using everything you've got, use everything you've got. Ryan is also Asian American. And although he doesn't speak a word of Chinese, we translated his, time, his, his uh, article and put it into the Chinese Times. Now, do you know that one article got him $7,000 worth of business, literally, because we were in the market where he's a match using everything he's got. What could you be using everything you've got that perhaps you haven't been using before? I'm going to come in. I'm going to ask some of you a few of that, a few of those questions. But I, before that, I want to tell you, if you look behind me at The Prophet of Kindness, this is one of my newest books. And, um, you know, it's interesting because when the book came out, as much as I'd love to tell you, I got a ton of press, which I did, about the book because I wrote the book. That's not the story. The story is the story about kindness. If you notice in this pandemic, if you noticed one word that keeps popping up, kindness. And so when the book came out, interestingly enough, I thought, well, just like I would do with any of my clients, I sat back and I went like, what's the story? The story is that uh, we were really a divided states of America. It's still a part of the story. And, and so the press release I sent out was actually about the divided states of America, where kindness has not been being practiced. Do you know, my friends, that story got me into Fox News in seven states, literally. That story got me into Inc. Magazine and Forbes Magazine because we're talking about kindness in business and literally over 70 radio and podcasts and counting. Literally, I just did one yesterday. And, and also got me on the front cover of an Iranian magazine, but I don't speak Farsi. I'm working on that. <laughs> don't quite understand what the article says. But what I want to share with you and go to profitofkindness.com. And you'll see a whole bunch of other media, P-R-O-F-I-T, by the way, because you can profit from kindness. Hey, maybe, um, David, would you be so kind to, when I give some links and things to chat them, or Randy, if you want to do that, whoever, that'd be perfect. Um, Profitofkindness.com, would love you to go look at that when you get a minute and uh, take a peek. JillLublin.com would be great, and they can take a peek at my website, too. And um, and then later I'll tell you one other cool link. But you know, what I'd love to do for a moment is actually come back to some of you. And I want to hear from you. What's your message? Or you can also, if you can, if you'd like, oh um, you can also, for instance, uh, tell me what's unique about you, what you can use everything you've got that maybe you hadn't thought of before. If I may share with you, I worked with a gentleman who owned an insurance company. And you know what's interesting is, um, well, he was writing a novel. And I also help people get book deals without a word written. And so uh, he owned an insurance company, he's writing a novel. And I thought, well, now that's an interesting story. So we did a story about um, like next careers, right? This was actually his third career. and. That story got him, check this out, into AARP's major magazine called Modern Maturity, which, by the way, is the biggest subscription magazine uh, in the world. Isn't that interesting? And, um, and, and so with that, I think you got to listen to what can you be using everything you've got. Let me hear from some of you. And um, I'm going to give you an important link uh, right now, if you would, which is Jill Lublin, excuse me, publicitycrashcourse.com slash registration. 
and then use the code stay visible. And I'll tell you about that in just a minute. It's all lowercase, all case sensitive. Publicitycrashcourse.com slash registration, all lowercase, stay visible. Who'd like to um, play with me, so to speak, and give me your message? Give me your message. Who'd like to play? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I see Todd. Thank you. Who else? Am I missing someone? I see Barter Bob. Thank you. And I see Karen. Thank you. Let's start with you three and uh, we'll go from there. Who do I call on first? Help me out here. <laughs> Todd, you're unmuted. Thank you. Uh, great. Go ahead, Jill. Thank you. So, Todd, welcome, welcome. You've actually just signed up now for a radio show. <laughs> the radio cool. show is um, <laughs> the radio show is Jill and Friends, and I'm Jill, and you're the Friends. And by the way, on that on that link, it's it's publicitycrashcourse.com/slash/registration, and the code is stay visible, all lowercase, all case sensitive. Please, if you guys can correct that, that'd be great. Yeah, I already corrected. Um, so, Todd. Yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you so much. All right, Todd, tell me something. Um, you can either do the problem today or you can give me what's your ooh-ah factor. What works for you? I guess the ooh-ah factor of why I went well, into uh, life insurance. Yeah. You want me to tell you that? Okay. Why I, you went I, into uh, where? Why I went into life insurance because I changed careers. I had a, oh, uh, good. Very, okay. So, mm -hmm. I had a very successful uh, media buying service for over 30 years. What that is, is that uh, clients would hire me to buy radio, TV, cable, and billboard advertising throughout markets throughout the United States. And I was very good at solving puzzles, doing the research, getting the right demographics. I'm a mathematician. I love doing research. And so this kind of coincides with life insurance, where, as you're saying, a lot of people have life insurance, but they need to get it reviewed because they may be getting, you know, they, they bought something that was recommended for them, but they, I can show them a way to get it more efficiently and get as good a coverage, if not better, for the same amount of money. And um, what happened when I had my Wait, so Todd, I'm, wait, Todd, hang on. Hang on, I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to stop you there because I want to take it away from the I and into the you. And the okay. you is the people who are listening to you. So I'm going to tell you that most people are confused about life insurance. It's a maze. Yes. They don't understand how much to have and how much to do. But I actually heard you saying something in your intro, which is even from a media perspective, more profound. And that is, you know, with today and losing your job and what do you do? about creating life insurance that really still works for you, Todd. And then I want you to give them three main things that they should do. Forget all the rest of it. Let's just zoom in on that because I think that'll be a powerful story for right now. Does that okay, make sense well, to you? Sure. Whoops. Uh, oh, he's on mute. Were, I thought you were done with him. I was going to move on to the next one. Yeah. Yeah, I am. And guys, still, if you would correct that code, that'd be great. Thank you so much. Um, all right. So thank you. And Todd, we didn't mean to cut you off. But I do, I do want to say, I think that that's a powerful story to recreate and redo would be excellent. Uh, Barter okay. Bob, I remember calling on you. Uh, and then I remember Karen, please. Okay, Barter Bob, you're unmuted. Hi there, Jill. Hey there, how are you? Very well, thank you. So, you want me to say something? <laughs> I do, I want you to either say what your message is okay. or how would you use everything you've got? Well, I'm a Katrina transplant through here in DFW and the economic climate in the aftermath was not ideal for barter, but the time that we live in right now is actually very good for barter. Um, business owners don't know when they have cash coming in. Um, and if they have something that is idle, if it's their time or if it's something sitting on their shelves, they can move that and buy stuff with it. And that's what I do. 
Well, and Bob, I love basically the story about how do we in this moment, in these times, do business in a way that's smart, that's easy, that's simple, and barter is a great solution, isn't it? And yes. so I want you to be the, the guy who's coming in with a new way to do business. It's not a new way. We know that. No, People have been yeah. doing it for centuries. <laughs> but uh, I think we were trading cows before this. But since we don't have cows, most of us, or goats, or chickens, some of you might, but uh, <laughs> I think that, you know, we got to look at new ways, new ways to create and put our names out there. So, Bob, I think barter is a very powerful story that really works and is quite simple in the marketplace. So congratulations, that's a great story. Notice Bob also has a, uh, a um, <laughs> I love that, a uh, banner right behind you. Yay, go Bob, right? And um, notice a lot of you have different, yes, very good. And <laughs> But that you have something behind you. Notice I have my four books behind me, right? You want things behind you or next to you, regardless of your books, products, services, put banners like our printer is doing, put different things that will help you, each one of you, so that your name gets out there consistently and persistently. Thank you, Bob. Karen, go for it. By the way, uh, David, the, the code is stay visible, all lowercase, all one word. Yeah, lowercase. It's already, it's already Thank there. you. It's Karen, already. go for it. Uh, Karen Burkholder. Karen Burkholder. Uh, it wasn't lowercase when I last looked. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Perfect. Yeah, Karen Burkholder, go ahead, Karen. Karen Burkholder Insurance Agency. Uh, the tagline from Starry Nights to City Lights, I've got you covered. I wrote an ebook or a, a my legacy planner, which goes into basically why I went with insurance because of the things that my family had gone through on the farm after my dad passed away. And even before he passed away, what we went through with not getting the annuity set up correctly and things like that. So uh, I put together the my legacy planner, mainly for the home insurance side. So people can actually start documenting their uh, items so that that way, the insurance has something to go back to to say, yes, they did actually have a 60 inch TV. They paid a thousand dollars for it. We will, you know, after their deductible, you know, get them the money to replace that when the tornadoes come through. And then I, it morphed into all lines of the insurance. And then also to make sure, you know, since I mainly work with seniors for their Medicare, how to make sure they document their, um, their medications, and then also I put a, uh, a page in the book, a what I call a communication log, and that communication log, so when they go to the hospital, that as different family members are in there, as the nurses and doctors come in, they can document what has happened while mom's there, so it, it kind of, that way they're not going and bugging them down at the reception area, they're, it's all right there. The doctor came in, they said, this is the diagnosis, this is the medications that they have to have. And then that way they can also double check when a new nurse comes in. Okay, the doctor said they need 50 milligrams and you're giving them 100. Wait a minute, you, can you go back and double check the, you know, the, what's in the computer? So that was kind of what so it So Karen, I love that. And so, got it. And I, so congratulations on getting a book together. Woohoo. And here's what I want to say to you. We want to get that message tighter, quicker, faster. Okay. This is the thing for all of you. You'll notice, you know, I'm getting you a lot of information in a fairly short time. Why? Because the media has no patience. <laughs> Meaning, you know, those Fox News uh, TV interviews I told you about, they were four minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, do you know how fast that is? You've got to be ready to roll with a script and a powerful message that's simple and easy. So Karen, for you, I think the message is, you know, do you even know uh, what to do in an emergency with any of your family? So at the, that's the problem today is that most people actually have no idea what to do with their family in an emergency or their loved ones. And so you want to give three solutions, simple ones from your book, for what to do. Number one, know your medications. Number two, you know what I'm saying? And give them three things. Then you give them the link to buy your book, which of course leads them to your insurance 
and your services. And so I think um, the story is backed out just a bit more. Uh, you're going to uh, what I would call too into the weeds. And this is for all of you. We all do this. Why? Because you love what you do. And I know that. And you're passionate about what you do. And I know that um, because you spend your time and energy networking and learning and growing. But here's what I also know. Everybody else does not want to know about all the weeds you go through, right? They want to know about what's in it for them, how it affects and impacts them. So, you know, Karen, you got a very powerful story about, about how not knowing kills people. And I, you know, I'd be confronted with it. I'd be powerful with it. And I think it's works. Todd, you've got a great story right now about, you know, what's happening in today's market uh, when, you know, we don't know what to do about our life insurance or you're unemployed and without benefits. That's a right now story, a troubled time story. Karen, you've got a troubled time story. Bob, you have a troubled time story, right? We can do business right now in new ways. Every single one of you, as I've been listening, has stories that you can shift. And then God willing, and you know, a bit of the future, you shift them again for maybe confusion stories like Karen, you know, what do we do when our family gets sick? You see where I'm going with this? And Karen, yes, you work in the story about, wow, you know, I was left alone with, uh, you know, people dying and not knowing what to do. And many people have that story. Many people have that story. And so it would touch a nerve. And that's what I want for all of you is I want you to, to get people in the heart and the gut, in the heart and the gut. And that's really powerful. I hope that helps. Let me take one more okay, question somebody wave and your or hand. somebody, somebody wave your to hand. play. Who wants to play? Ricky Jean. Okay, I, Ricky. Yeah, and I see Mark too. Great. Let's let's hope we can get both of them in. Go for it, Ricky Jean. Okay, we're. Uh, you want my story? That's that's kind of a hard thing to do quickly. No, actually, I don't want your story unless it's a use everything that you've got. But what I heard was, a, what, let, let's try with what is the problem today? Because really, from a messaging standpoint, that's what's going to affect and impact people more. And then like Karen, like I told Karen, you'll work in your story. You'll work in your story. What's the problem today? The problem today in the... Based on, based on more what you do. Yeah. And the music industry is that the golden age of songwriting where you wrote a song and somebody had a major hit, you were paid millions of dollars up front almost. Those days are over and now it's all streaming music and you have to uh, figure out how to fit into the music industry of today, which is completely different than what it was even you know, in the early 2000s. So Ricky, what I see is an opportunity. And I don't know if this is part of your business, but what I see is an opportunity for people to get their music out more easily, simply, connectedly. I mean, I've been helping people get book deals for 18 years with major publishers and agents. And I also help people get self-published. Let me share with you, people can get self-published so much quicker and easier now, um, which is super. So what I would do is turn your story around to what can be done that's so fabulous that gives people a new opportunity right now. And then, of course, we're going to lead them to your songs and to your opportunity, for their opportunity to listen to your songs, right? And so what I would tell you, working with musicians and creative people, one of the stories I often will have you do is a story about how to be creative in troubled times. You're obviously creative, right? And, I, and, my, and my albums are already published. So I, my music is already there. The problem is not everybody knows that I'm there. I'm, I'm right. Well, I'm what's out publicity? There. My music is Go right ahead. out there where, where the superstars music is. We're all equal now, but they just don't know me. 
Right, because maybe you haven't been doing some publicity lately. So I want to open up the opportunity for you to create a visibility building campaign to drive people to your music. And one of the ways to do that, particularly I've done this very successfully with creative people, that's artists, musicians, uh, you know, anyone in the, in the creative arts field, is we do a story around creativity and driving people for how to create more creativity. It, it works really well, Ricky Jean and might be something that will drive people to you. That's what I'd recommend to you. Okay, Mark, we can squeeze, you can unmute yourself. Okay, um, well, I'm kind of making notes of what you've been saying. And uh, for me, uh, the question would become, who do you know? Do you know how to get your business back up and running if your computer died or suddenly disappeared? And for my industry, the biggest threat right now is ransomware. Um, so that's been affecting cities and governments and, you know, businesses too, but that's, we, we have to have a strategy before we get breached, you know, so that's, that's my I love that. And by the way, I represented a, a man named, oh, I love that. I, I represented a man named Charles Crescent Wood who did a lot around computer security and, and the message we were really successful with was, you know, are you secure? Are you secure? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think all of us, like you guys, when we were on the Zoom, you were doing things to keep this Zoom secure. And I heard one of you tell a story that, yeah, somebody got Zoom hacked, right? It's been happening. Uh, it is, you know, these places are not secure. Uh, the psychologist I work with, she has to have a very specific program uh, for her patients and clients right now. So, Mark, I think that uh, this is a good story. Are you secure? The other thing that occurs to me is, you know, is your computer running you or are you running your computer? <laughs> Could be really fun. And, you know, what do you do? I mean, so these are three stories I'm just giving you right now. Uh -huh. What do you do when your computer breaks down? Right. And then, Mark, just like all of you, you have no matter what industry you're in. And I hear different industries, insurance and real estate and graphic design and music and and all, all kinds of um, all kinds of printing and all kinds of businesses. Some of you um, with with books, some of you with um, products. Right. And services for sure, mostly service businesses. And so particularly with service businesses, what you've got to indicate is it's a, like a what happens if story, right? And you want to be a what happens if solution provider. So, you know, I think that's really powerful. So write that question down. What happens if? Fill in the blank for each one of you. What happens if? You know, um, we didn't have, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's a really super cool story for many of you to fit into in this moment, in this moment. And I think it's really powerful, right? Um, because what you're doing is you're building that visibility building campaign. I hope that helps, Mark. That's amazing. And, and keep looking at for all of, thank you. Keep looking for all of you at what's the problem today? What's the problem today? Remember, we're not answering what you do. We're answering what's the problem today? Now, if I may, let me uh, share with you, and then I'll open up again for some questions, that I actually teach a virtual publicity course, my friends. This is no nonsense. It's get it done. It's really fun. And some of this messaging piece that you've been all been, I'm hearing you struggle with a little bit, is actually one of the first things we do. We define it, and I, we actually do three documents in the course. No kidding, no worries. Um, and four templates that you can use for your business right now in any project, any time. But really what, what we're doing in the course is get it done, no kidding. And so what I did was I shifted business and what I offer and the opportunity to work with me in a really reasonable way. And I call it pandemic pricing. So uh, what I did with my publicity course is made it my, what I call bring a friend price. And now it's only 197. It used, if you go to publicitycrashcourse.com, you'll see it's 1,297. And I shifted pricing to serve a lot more people. I used to do this class in Dallas. Um, now we're doing it online, virtually with me all day in a small group. 
uh, and we're getting your publicity done. No kidding, no nonsense. Roll up our sleeves. Three documents you actually leave with and four templates you can use ongoingly. So it's only 197. If you need two payments, super cool, no problem. And how you register for that is you go to, that's the code I had you guys putting in, um, publicitycrashcourse.com slash registration and use the code stay visible, all one word, all lowercase. David, I think, or Randy did put it in the chat. Um, please use that code so that you can get my literal pandemic price thing. I've never done it at this rate. When I've been there before, you guys, I think you know I didn't offer it at this rate, but I have uh, changed everything so that I can serve much more people. And I'd love to serve you to really get your message honed in, connected, duplicated, and then get more clients with a message that works and a message that matters. Because what I know of all of you is you have a message that matters. It's just about finding the right way to send it out and the right way to do it. So I look forward to working with you. And I just wanted to open it up again and see is there any other questions or messages that I can help you with? Yeah, we got about three minutes. So, and then we've got to land the plane. So anybody else got any? Got it. Anybody else got any questions for Jill? It's been an awesome, awesome time. Thank you, Jill. It's incredible. Anybody else? Everybody, I can, I can see everybody's writing, everybody's putting things down. I just need to do a couple of housekeeping things before. I have never written so much in one of these calls as I have with you, Aww. Jill. Good job. Well, thank you. Thank you. And Randy, I want you to get your name out there using that visibility about how do you sell a business in pandemic times, right? What do you do to sell a business? These are all the questions. As I've heard each of you intro, I promise you, I've been writing notes. I, I read them back to some of you. You all have stories that matter right now. That's my good news for you today. And now we've got to take those stories, pivot them into a message that works so that you consistently and persistently stay out in the media, that you have visibility building actions, and that your name is recognizable, meaning your company, your products, your services, your offerings. And I know the power of publicity is what does that. Yeah, that's great. And uh, that is an awesome deal, by the way, guys. So if you are interested in getting those, getting that put together, uh, Jill does an awesome job. Uh, nothing but positive feedback from anybody I know that's been engaged with her. So uh, really good Thank job you. there. Again, let's let's give Jill a, a virtual hand here. I'm not going to open the mics up yet because it gets kind of cacophonous. But uh, but anyway, Jill, I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Uh, when Randy says he wrote more, then I'm actually kind of insulted because he used to say he wrote the most on what I said, but he knows everything I talk about now. So, <laughs> so I'm I'm glad I'm glad that somebody else has taken my place. So you're doing an awesome job. A um, couple of announcements just to keep everybody uh, on track. We will have um, we do have training next week next um, next Friday. And I encourage you to um, go on to Meetup. I'm not going to get into a lot. Just go on to Meetup and, and RSVP. I think we continue to have the top quality uh, speakers and teachers and just servant leaders that join us on these uh, Friday Friday uh, calls. So I'm so blessed and we're so thankful for that. So again, Jill, I can't I can't thank you enough. And I know everybody here was was blessed by it as well. Um, again, we are continuing to meet. It's my virtually. pleasure, David. You're, yeah, I can't tell you how much I, I'm excited about uh, the fact that we were able to pull this off.